and she should be in India. So she should be, her fame will come somewhere, her, she will come to her own somewhere in the East. So that is what started playing on her mind and she thought, okay, I'll go to India. And um, this, uh, the young girl's the painting which won the Grand Salon Award was, she was the first, Asi uh, the first Asian and the youngest artist, she was 19 then, to have won that award. So she decided her destination would be India. And it was to be Shimla, um, her favorite home, and we are all very familiar with her paintings. Can we just go over some of the self-portraits? She was very smitten by herself. She loved herself and also she was very attractive and uh, some, some accuse of her of a narcissistic streak. She painted herself so often. This is one of Amrita's self-portraits. This is the portrait of a young man. This is her western face. Ah, this is the painting I was talking about. Um, the young girls. So one of them is a French girl and the other one is probably Amrita herself, engaged in conversation, talking about things, looking at each other. This was the painting which brought her the award from the Grand Saloon. Next. Ah, this is Amrita in, you know, full uh, abandon, a, a beautiful self-portrait. These are the works. This is a Cezanne landscape. These were the works that she came into contact with while in Paris. This is uh, Paul Gauguin. And the women form, the female form, which Amrita exploited so well till the very end, is, has some some inspiration from here. Next. And this comes her Indian face. You know, Indian, all dressed in a sari. And I was reading um, one of the essays which I've enjoyed very much is by Kushwan Singh on Amrita Shergil, who was also very much part of the Simla Society when she was there, is in his book called My Book of Favorite Women. So one day, uh, he says she landed up at my house and he was not at home, he had gone somewhere and wife was somewhere else. When he came back, there was beer on the table and uh, he asked the servant, the, uh, the helper, that who, who's here? So the helper's reply was, a mim sahib in a sari. So that was one of the things about Amrita, she was uh, taken as a mim sahib in a sari. And there's much more, he says, which I'll come to later. So she, and the sari did amazing things to her charming self. And she started on the task of painting. Her first painting, uh, which I had mentioned earlier, was uh, three girls. He made the one she made in India. That was her first painting. Uh, next. Ah, this is the Shimla house where Amrita lived and painted. Next. This is Amrita, much later. This is a picture taken in Lahore. Next. Yes, we come to the story of the three girls. She was in the Majithya house at Amritsar and her cousin's daughters were visiting. Um, they were technically her nieces. But uh, the age difference was not very much and she became friendly with them and she decided that you model for me. So she made them sit on a, one of those long rollers and it was there that she started her painting. Next, yes, this is a full view of the painting and the three models were um, Beant Kaur, Narvair Kaur, and Gur Gurbachan Kaur. And uh, Beant was the mother of 
Karan Veer, and that's how I got uh, photographs of those times. So Three Girls has been a signature work, really very, very popular. And uh, for some reason, I used to uh, call it Three Sisters. Because every time I looked at it, it gave me the feeling of, and, uh, and they happened to be three sisters. And um, while I was in Delhi for some years, um, one of the art gallery owners gave prints of this painting to some um, 15 to 20 women artists and asked them to rework it. So they took the prints and gave their version of the three girls. All kinds of things happened. The work changed totally. Um, two paintings which I vividly recall, are uh, one was Arpana, of course. Arpana made it three women lying in the dark. Two are asleep and one is awake. You know, as our parents, my mother used to tell me, you must burn midnight oil if you got to get somewhere. One is awake and illuminated. But a very interesting version was by Gogi Sarojpal. What she did to this painting was, that instead of all looking the same way, she made them turn around and, you know, in a more interactive manner so that they're looking at one another. And she put flowers on their clothes and one hand, which is actually not there in the painting, it's cut, she completed that. And uh, the painting became very interesting. Her version was very interesting. Um, the detractors of Shergil say that though her subject was Indian, yet the her paintings of her Indian times tend to be more like still life, which is a very harsh statement, that uh, she sees them as, you know, pensive people. And she also, uh, in one of her statements, she said, uh, if there was no poverty in India, I would have nothing to paint. Or for that matter, or maybe she saw it like that, that these are three girls. They appear pensive from what we hear, the accounts one hears, that they were bubbly, lively girls who led full lives, lived till their 80s or more, and then passed away into the good night. So this has been one of the, the her approach to the Indian subject was probably she saw it like that because her life was very different. She got a freedom or an exposure which most Indian women would never get. And this painting is time and again uh, redone in one way or the other. Yeah, now that rupee. Now this, uh, there's this Instagram poet who's very popular and um, Insta Instagram artist, Rupi Kaur in Toronto. She's a, a, my, her mother migrated, she and her mother migrated from Punjab. So she, with her two friends, has played the three sisters and got themselves photographed, and it became news. And even before her, there were some um, white Canadians who had done this, you know, the three sister act, the three girl act. So this is one of the popularity of the, um, the painting lives on. This painting, she completed in um, 1935. And in 1937, it was exhibited at Bombay. And it won her an award. And interestingly, when Amrita uh, moved to India, in one of her related statements, she said, the West is for Picasso and Matisse, India is mine, that I'm going to paint it. You know, this is also a statement which has been gone into many times, and K.G. Subramanian said that it's a very pompous thing to say. Well, it does sound pompous, especially that India has a long tradition of art, and we've had women artists too, though most of them anonymous, uh, sculptors, miniature painters, and one tradition of zanana, you know, zanana photos, that the women who stayed in Parda, there would be artists who'd paint them for matrimonial purposes. 
and send those uh, paintings out. But what Amrita did and contributed and which is probably led to a lot of opening up of the Indian woman artist was that she brought the Indian woman artist out of anonymity in full glory before the world and people who talk about Amrita's life recall a lot of uh, you know her life was full of a uh, lot of uh, romance you call it romance or multiple relationships she had great energy for art as well as you know and she liked to shock people she liked to say things which were not very nice and you know shock them and again from this uh, account of Hushwan Singh's for one of their luncheons he of course had a grand house in Shimla too uh, Amrita Sher was also invited she was staying with some Chamanlal family of those times and um, his son who was seven months old Rahul Singh was in a playpen and you know what a lovely child with you know his golden brown curls and mm, wide eyes and fair as Kushwan describes his son who was playing then which is probably true because he still carries these marks and um, people were congratulating Kaval uh, Kushwan Singh's wife that what a beautiful child and suddenly guzzling her beer she looked up and with one remark she said what an ugly little child I believe there was stunned silence and later Mrs. Kushwan Singh said that this so and so BB is not going to be, come to my house again one of the party people delivered this to Amrita and she said oh she said that well I'll teach her a lesson by seducing her husband so Kushwan says this pleased me greatly but uh, she never did it she never seduced me and this is Amrita showing her work uh, now we come to this painting which has been uh, much talked about this month because it was sold at an auction and it went for uh, 18.69 crore so Amrita's fame has multiplied by people um, you know not just admiring her it has also multiplied in um, money uh, probably this is not the money that Amrita had imagined her work would earn and this is a little girl again from her parental family a girl called Babit and I believe that she's still alive as an old lady and this little girl in blue she had gifted I think to Charles Fabry and then no one had seen this public uh, in public this painting for some 80 years till at till it appeared at the Sotheby's auction and fetched this stunning amount she was getting eight ten in previous auctions but this was um, a rise suddenly uh, the little girl in blue I'm going to try and look for the little girl in blue and um, also Amrita not just women artists she had a very um, a major interest on modern art in India of course there were so many streams of art there was the Bengal school there was um, uh, South Indian painters and she the Indian elements that she took were colors of the miniature paintings the form of the Ajanta frescoes and uh, she painted on but she influenced a lot of people and a lot of people have admitted that influence when I started off say 40 years ago any artist now it is less but any artist would say that their inspiration comes from Amrita Shergil and Amrita Shergil had an ardent admirer she had so many but one of them was Jawaharlal Nehru and uh, when the country came became independent her work was declared as national art treasure and it most of it, much of it is housed in the National Gallery of Modern Art and there is 